Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about a neat little Excel trick. Now, we have been speaking a lot about Power BI, DAX, Power Query, and that sort of stuff. I thought it will be a nice change to talk about Excel for just a while. Now, this video is going to be about the get pivot data function in Excel. Now, if you don't really recall the get pivot data, you must have witnessed the get pivot data while you were writing a formula just outside the pivot table and you referenced a cell inside of the pivot table, and that's where you get that ugly get pivot data. Now, most people believe that it's of no use, but in this video, I'm going to show you a few interesting applications of get pivot data. No further ado, let's begin. All right, I'm in an Excel file and that's where I have some data. Let me just build the case and explain you the data and let's just take a look at the application of get pivot data. So in this sales data, which is a really simple sales data, I have date, sales rep, customer, amount, profit, and the region, couple of rows here. And from this data set, I have built a pivot table, which is on the next sheet, which is sheet number one. And that's where I have a pivot table. Now I have definitely formatted the pivot table uh, a little bit. You can see that uh, I have years here. I have the next column as customers and the total sales of every single customer in that particular year. Nothing too complicated. I'm sure you can make a pivot table like that. Now, oftentimes, when you are trying to write a formula for whatever reason outside of the pivot table and you want to fetch a cell inside of the pivot table and you write a formula referring to a cell inside, you would get get pivot data. Please take a look. So if I'm just on this particular column and if I maybe for whatever reason I want to go fetch this particular cell, I click on that cell and I get that get pivot data. Now people have different workarounds for this. Some people may just copy paste the pivot table as pay special values or some people may just type the cell address and then drag it down, whatever that might be. But generally, people tend not to use the get pivot data formula. One of the ways to turn it off is that you go to the analyze tab and you have options drop down right here and you can actually turn it off from here. But for this particular video, we let it stay on and we'll use the get pivot data to do something pretty neat. So in this pivot table, what I want to do is let's just say that I want to find out top three customers for every single year. I'm going to come to the customer field right here, apply the filter right here, go over to value filters and go over top 10. And I'm just going to say that this is going to be top three items for total sales and click on OK. And now what we get is the best three customers in every single year, right? And that's the total sales for that. Now, maybe I would like to find the percentage contribution of the sales of the top three customers over the total sales of the year. So what do I do? I take the amount and drop it into the value section once again. And what do I do? I change the calculation of that amount. I right click on that amount. I go over to show values as, and I'm just going to say that this is going to be percentage of the parent total. Where is that? Right here. Percentage of the parent total and the parent is nothing but the year. I'm just going to say, okay. And what I get is the percentage of the parent total. That means that if 177,450 was the sales of this particular customer, what was it if I divided that by the entire sales of this particular year? But hang on, this is not the sales of the entire year. This is actually the sales of the top three customers. That means the contribution percentage that you're getting is actually the contribution percentage of the total sales of the top three customers, not the sales of all the customers of the entire year. So that's not really what I want. Now, if you had been working with Power Pivot, you would have written a measure or a DAX uh, to be able to get that. But I don't know if there is a way to be able to achieve that inside of the pivot table. So what do we do? We actually play a little trick right here. So I'm actually going to remove this column that I have created because that's not the percentage that I want. I actually want uh, 177,000 to be divided by the sales of the entire year, not by the total of the three best customers. So I'm just going to get rid of that and maybe copy this pivot table, just copy this pivot table and put this on the right side here, paste that right here. And from this pivot table, I am just going to remove the customer field. And this is the entire sales of the entire. This is the sales for 2005, sales for six, sales for seven, sales for eight. Now, if I start to write the formula outside of the pivot table, this certainly gives me the get pivot data function, right? And if I, if I just try to refer this here as well, it will again give me the get pivot data function. You can see that if I commit to that, it actually gives me the get pivot data. Now let's just go investigate the parts of the get pivot data and how can we use them to our benefit. Now, if I want to calculate the uh, percentage contribution, I want two numbers, the numerator and the denominator. Numerator is right here, denominator is right here. Then again, for the next year, a numerator is right here and the denominator actually becomes the sales for the entire sales for 2006. So what do I want to do is once I drag the formula down and I move to the year of 2006, 
the denominator should actually change to 166, not 1.6 million actually, and then again 1.9 million, and then 2 million, and so on and so forth. That's how it should kind of work. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to take a look at my formula. In the get pivot data formula, you can see that we are trying to fetch the amount field of a pivot table that starts with G3, and the conditions or the dimensions that we are trying to filter by years equals to 2005. And you can see that 2005 is hard coded. Now, I don't really want to hard code 2005. I want to make it dynamic. So only this part of the get pivot data, I will actually reference it through this particular uh, field right here. So pick, it, pick up the year from right here. That's also where we have the year. If I still commit to the formula, press enter, I would still get the value. But when this function actually moves down to the next year, which is where I can see 2006, this would actually start to give me 1.6 million and not 1.7 million. I drag that formula down and it actually gives me a ref error because we don't really have a year here. You can see that this particular A5 cell is currently blank and that's why it gives me a ref error. Nothing to worry about, we can change the layout of the pivot table. I go to the pivot table, go to the design tab right here and change the layout of the pivot table to repeat all the item labels. 2006, 2007, 2008, all of these are labels. I want to repeat them over and over again. So repeat all the item labels and all of them get repeated. Now let's just take a look at our get pivot data function. It actually starts to work just fine. And if I just drag that to my entire pivot table, I am actually going to get the sales of the entire year, which is nothing but my denominator. If you realize what I have just done, this is sort of a, like a, a VLOOKUP if that I have done. You have a sum if, you have a count if, but there's no VLOOKUP if, that's what I have done. So take a look at this condition. If this condition actually matches right here, then you go fetch the value of the second column. That's exactly what I have done. Now, it's simple. Now I can just take my numerator, which is nothing but this particular value, uh, which is again going to be delivered by get pivot data. And you can see that again, it hard codes everything. It hard codes the name of the customer. It hard codes the year, which is what I don't really want. So I can just cancel that and I can say, hey, pick up the customer from here and cancel that and pick up the year from right here. That's it. Commit to the formula, drag the formula down and it just works just fine. If you do not really want the subtotals to appear, you can also wrap the function around in the if error function or you can perhaps even calculate this particular value over the entire year as well. My idea was to give you a demonstration of the get pivot data that it's not all that bad as we think it to be but we can definitely use get pivot data to smartly look up items from other pivot table, which acts like a VLOOKUP if rather than any regular function. All right, that was a quick little trick on the get pivot data function. If you're using get pivot data function in a nifty way, please do not forget to share your trick in the comment section and I'll be glad to take a look at that. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses in case you're starting out with Power BI. And you need help with fundamentals first and then building on your concepts to a level where you start solving more sophisticated, more practical problems. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.